Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and today I am going to be going on a blind date with a book, kind of. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of vlogs ago, I went to Barnes and Noble and they had a blind date with a book section, which is something I've never really explored before. I've kind of always been nervous that it's going to be a book that I have read before. So why would I buy a book and risk the fact that I've already read it? Um, but this one intrigued me in particular because it said that it was a rare book. And so I was guessing that that meant that it's probably not a book that I'd already heard of. Um, and it was a thriller and the description sounded like nothing I had read before. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Um, so I bought that book and I unboxed that book and then it's been sitting on my nightstand for several weeks now and I thought I really need to read that book. So I thought I would make a video actually going off of the theme of going on a blind date with this book and reading this book. And why I'm doing it now in particular, I actually have the house to myself this weekend. Um, it's a Saturday. It's the Saturday after Thanksgiving and I'm actually not with my family. Um, my husband took my kids up to see his family like seven hours away. I couldn't go with because I had to work yesterday, Black Friday. I had to work a little bit this morning and I kind of need to just be available for my job this weekend so I couldn't travel far away or anything. So he took them and they're having a good time with his family. Um, but I'm left with this Saturday evening, Saturday night with nothing really to do. And so I thought how nice would it be to just have a little at home date night with myself and a good book. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, let's talk about what I'm gonna read. So I wish that I saved the unwrapping part for this video and it makes sense why I didn't because I didn't know I was gonna be doing this video in the future but I wish that part of this would be finding out what book I'm gonna read but I do already know it's called The Stranger Behind You by Carol Goodman. It is still blind because I've never even heard of this book before. I've never heard anyone talk about it. Uh, I've never heard any reviews. I don't even know what it's about. Let's go ahead and read the synopsis to Together. So this says, journalist Joan Lurie has written a seething article exposing a notorious newspaper tycoon as a sexual predator, but the night it goes live, she is brutally attacked. Traumatized and suffering the effects of a concussion, she moves into a highly secure apartment building in Manhattan called The Refuge, which was at one time a Magdalene laundry. I don't know what that means. Joan should be safe here, so how can she explain the cryptic incidents that are occurring? Lillian Day is Joan's new 96-year-old neighbor in The Refuge. In 1941, Lillian witnessed a mysterious murder that sent her into hiding at the Magdalene Laundry and she hasn't come out since. As she relates her harrowing story to Joan, Joan sees striking similarities to her own past. Melissa Osgood, nearly widowed and revengeful, has burning questions about her husband's recent death. When she discovers a suspicious paper trail that he left behind, she realizes how little she knew about her marriage, but it seems Joan Lurie might be the one who has the answers. As these three lives intersect, each woman must stay one step ahead of those who are desperate to make sure the truth is never uncovered. Okay. To be completely honest, that synopsis doesn't really intrigue me that much, but I'm still gonna read this book. I'm hoping that it's thrilling. I'm hoping it has like creepy vibes, but overall I hope it's compulsively readable. I hope I can get through this in one night. Um, it is pretty short. It is like 311 pages. I read about a page a minute. So that's like five hours of reading time. So I should definitely be able to read this in one night. It's about 3 p.m. right now. Let's talk about my plan for the night. Um, I am going to start reading this right away. I think I'll open some wine to start our date with some drinks. Read this for a couple hours I will probably order some food for takeout and bring that home and eat it and continue reading and then I would like to watch a movie which is a difficult thing to do while reading a book so I think the goal is gonna be to finish the book before I start a movie but also include that movie and what I watch in with this vlog because I think it's kind of fun to hear uh, movie talk sometimes right um, and I haven't watched a movie in a long time and my husband doesn't really like scary movies and so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to watch a scary movie that I've been meaning to watch for a long time. So I want to do that tonight as well because that's a fun date night activity. Drinks, dinner, movie, perfect. So with that, I think I am going to go ahead and get started on this book. I haven't decided, am I going to do spoilers? I feel like I might as well because this is such an unknown book. Um, when was it published? 2020. So it's not brand new. So I feel like if anyone watching this was really interested in reading this book, maybe they would have already done it. Or maybe I'll just say, I'm gonna spoil this book in this video. So if you are planning on reading it, maybe save this video for later, come back once you've read it. But if you're not interested in reading it and you just want me to tell you what happens, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And of course, I'll talk about what I think of it. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Let's go ahead and get this date night started. <laughs>
to keep this weird angle here uh, because I don't want to move my camera. I am 20 pages in, so I've only read two chapters. Actually, I've read the prologue in chapter one, um, so not a lot has happened, but our main character, or our first main character, Joan, just got attacked, um, and it's kind of the story of how that came about, and I just wanted to come on because um, we're off to an interesting start because she's telling the story about how she's a journalist and she just released this article um, basically exposing this super rich guy who sexually abused many of his employees and many women and she's like celebrating this article she's at a party and then she gets in an uber to go home and she's pretty drunk and the uber driver gets the address wrong so she actually gets dropped off like two blocks away from her apartment and she says thank god for gentrification um, she's stumbling down the streets that only a few decades ago would have been littered with hypodermic needles But now are completely changed as evidenced by the Lexus cruising the street Probably club kids looking for some chic after-hour spot My mother had turned green when I told her where I was living But she was remembering the neighborhood from her own brief residency in the city in the gritty 80s Before she scurried back home to the safety of upstate New York So basically she's saying that this neighborhood used to be dangerous but now because of gentrification it's not and she's saying like that's a good thing which obviously is a controversial take um and it's always hard to know if something like that is intended to make the character look offensive and despicable or whatever or if that's a reflection of the author so i think that'll come um as i get into the other characters and figure out like are they also awful um or is this character just made out to really be that awful I just thought I'd point it out because I think um, it's always kind of helpful when people point out potentially problematic things in books. Um, I definitely don't know nearly enough about the issue of gentrification and racism and all that goes into it, but I do know that saying, thank God for gentrification, um, is not a great statement to make. So I'm going to get back to reading, but I thought I would check in with that 20-page uh, update. Oh, I do realize though that that was said in order to make it kind of ironic that um, our main character was just thinking that and then in her apartment building or as she was walking into her apartment building, she got attacked. So I do think it was probably on purpose in order to get that like juxtaposition or show that our main character was thinking like, oh, this neighborhood's so safe now and she's clearly delusional um, because she was still in danger. So that's that, do with that what you will. get another glass of wine i'm gonna go ahead and order my food and go pick that up it's still kind of early it's like 3 45 p.m but to be honest i never ate lunch today so i'm already hungry um and i want to obviously go drive and pick up the food before i drink more wine so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i also don't know how long it's gonna take for the food to actually be ready so i'm gonna go ahead and call that in pick it up i also have to stop by the post office which is like right by the mexican restaurant um, to get some stamps for my Christmas cards that I'm sending out. So I'm gonna do all of that, so it'll probably be a little bit before I get back into reading, but I will be back once I have my food and I'm gonna be reading while I eat that food on my date. Bad news, the post office is closed. Um, apparently it was only open from nine to 11 a.m. today. And I'm looking around at other post offices close to me and it looks like all of them close at like 10 or 11 a.m. on Saturdays. Um, apparently that's just something I did not know. So apparently I'm gonna have to come back on a weekday, but okay, I guess I'm gonna wait to get stamps. Um, and I'm gonna wait to send out my Christmas cards, but um, I'm gonna pop over to the Mexican restaurant now and get my food. Okay, I'm home. Don't mind my messy countertop over there. I'm gonna go ahead and eat. In case you're wondering what I got, I got two cheese enchiladas and then chips and queso. I refilled my wine glass with this. In case you were wondering, you're probably not, but what I got is this Sterling Castle Riesling. I am definitely far from a wine connoisseur. I just got that at Target. Um, I also have my water because I prefer to drink water with food than wine. Um, and I've got my book here. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue reading as I eat my very fancy dinner and as I continue my date. Okay, it's a bit later now. I am on page 112. 
um, and it's like 6 6 11 p.m and the book is okay so far so basically we have joan who is that journalist that i was talking about who exposed this sexual predator um who had all of these like former employees come out with allegations that he sexually assaulted them basically that story broke it went viral and then within like 24 hours of that going public that guy who was accused killed himself. So now Joan is getting a lot of backlash about the story um, and about her accusations and everything. Plus she was attacked that night of that party like I was telling you about. And so she has moved into this new building called The Refuge. Um, basically she moved there because it seems like it's really safe. It has a lot of security measures and it's kind of uh, like remote and removed from the city where she lived before. Um, so she's living there and she's still very scared and a lot of things are happening that are like kind of creepy or that make you um, feel like she's being followed. You don't really know what's happening. So that's definitely like the main storyline. Then we're also following the wife of the man who um, was accused and then killed himself. Uh, she, after his death, um, is now struggling money-wise. It turns out that he wasn't as rich as he led on to be and he left her in a really difficult financial situation. So she actually also ends up moving into that same apartment building, one, to save money because she can't afford to keep living in her like big fancy house. And then also because she found out that that journalist moved there and she has kind of a vengeance out against that uh, journalist. She wants to get revenge or do whatever um, to, you know, get justice for her husband's death. And then the last um, piece is that third character who's Joan's 96 year old neighbor. And we've only met her once. She's only been in one scene, but she's very mysterious. Basically, she's lived in this building since it was, I actually have to figure out what exactly what exactly a Magdalene laundry is. Basically a Magdalene laundry, oh, was an asylum for fallen women, oh, which are prostitutes or not prostitutes, but women who would like seduce men. Okay, interesting. So it sounds like it's a home where these women lived unwillingly or were like sent there or brought there kind of against their will as a place to like, I don't know, rehab them or something. So it's unclear exactly what this old woman was doing at this apartment building at that time. And it's a little bit also unclear what she's doing there now. Um, when Joan asked like the doorman about this old woman, he said that she didn't live there and he didn't know anyone by that name. So I am curious. Um, I'm a little bit like wondering what the big uh, like point is for this book. There's not really like a big mystery that's needing to be solved right now because again everything has kind of already happened where Joan already wrote the article, the guy already committed suicide. We're just kind of waiting to figure out the aftermath of what the wife is gonna do to her and like that's it. So very curious to see if it becomes more um, like outwardly mysterious. So far it is a little bit creepy feeling. It's definitely not like thrilling like I'm not scared to turn the pages you know what I mean or anything like that um, but I'm curious I'm interested and I'll definitely uh, keep on reading turns out that this author has written 22 other books so um, that's a lot and it's interesting that I have never heard of Carol Goodman before but obviously her books are popular enough for her to continue publishing so I'm hoping that uh, there's a good ending here but we will see if I had to rate it right now it's like a three stars it's pretty run of the mill. There's nothing that has me so on the edge of my seat, but I'm also not completely bored. I'm still a little interested. So I'm going to keep reading and I will tune in when I have some more updates. just finished the book. It is a little after 10 p.m. now. So it took, I mean, seven hours from when I started this video, but I wasn't reading that entire time, obviously. So I feel like that's pretty good time to completely start and finish a book. So let's talk a little bit more about 
about it and my thoughts. Uh, so the mystery of this book is kind of weird. There's not really a mystery other than like I've already told you. It's basically his wife trying to figure out what really happened. This journalist who wrote the article finding out what really happened. Um, basically the guy who was accused was actually a pretty crappy dude who did most of the stuff he was accused of um, or all of the stuff that he was accused of but he was also involved in other rich person politics um, and there was this other guy basically who was responsible for like the article getting published and all of this coming out and he actually ended up killing that guy and it wasn't a suicide and the way they found that out was the wife of that dude who died uh, ended up like teaming up with the journalist and they uncovered the truth. It was okay. I'm not a huge fan of like rich men and their politics. <laughs> I do like that the two women like teamed up because you are made out at the beginning to think that like this rich guy's wife um, is suspicious. But then partway through the book, you realize she's just a mom who is also realizing all of this about her dead husband. And she also just wants like the truth and justice for all of those girls that he wronged and all of that. So that was good. And then there's like this other half of the book that deals with this lady who's 96 years old. Her portion of the book is basically talking about like her past, um, like in 1941 when she was again at this like laundry place, like this prostitute place um, where she was basically trapped. She was going through some stuff and she like escaped and she had these lingering, um, like questions about like her friend that she was with and she was trying to escape with and she never really got closure on like what happened to that friend and like what was going on with her um, life. And the whole time throughout the story, her story is really like mirroring the story that's happening to this journalist. And it turns out that that old lady wasn't real, um, but she was real, she was a real person in history but she was like a ghost or a figment of this journalist's imagination or whatever basically like helping the journalist kind of figure out what's going on in her real time through this thing that happened in the past and then of course she uncovers some things about that past mystery that like give that ghost closure. Um, so <laughs> overall, as you can tell, I'm a little bit, I don't know, confused by it, or it's just a lot to pack into one short thriller. I don't think I would call it a thriller. Um, the mystery parts and the thriller parts weren't that action packed. It was just a lot more like drama and politics, like I mentioned. And then the history part, I actually do really like historical fiction books. I just don't like them in thrillers like I would have rather read that type of story in just a pure historical fiction book because it feels a lot like the um, like World War II historical fiction that I've read before but it was a different spin on that with them being in the Magdalene Laundry and everything like that I think that's a kind of cool concept and I would like to maybe read a book more about that but it was just kind of confusing having it in this book and it was like two different tones when it would switch from like the mystery part to like the historical fiction part. So I think I'm gonna give it three stars. I can't say that there's actually I'm gonna stop myself there. The one thing that bugged me was throughout this book the journalist lady um, had so many instances of first of all getting chloroformed like that happened or was referenced so many times in this book. And then also after her attack, she had so many instances of like her vision going blurry or her memories or like losing her memory basically. And the memory thing is kind of a big pet peeve of mine in thrillers and the vision blurring also was annoying to me because it's like if that was happening, you would probably go to a doctor or you would figure out why that's happening and this main character just like brushed through it. She was like, oh yeah, my vision clouded over so I couldn't read anything or I couldn't see anything. It's just like, what? What a convenient way for her not to see what's going on but like she's not addressing that in a way that a normal person would. So that was annoying. Other than that, I didn't have any big like issues with the story. Well, again, there was all that like gentrification stuff, um, which was mentioned again later on. I think the author was just trying to make these two white lady protagonists 
not super likable, which is an interesting tactic because there were the two white ladies and then the two rich white guys and none of them were likable. So I'm not really sure what the intention there was. Um, so now that I'm talking myself more about it, is it a three star? That's what I was gonna rate it, but is it more like a two star? Because it was just kind of meh with its plot, but then also had some additional annoying things. I'm gonna have to think on it a little bit. So this is either a two or three star. Unfortunately, I'm not recommending this to other people to read. I mean, unless that plot and like the historical fiction edition sounds super intriguing to you, then go for it. But if you typically like thrillers that I like that are like high action, lots of twists, that kind of thing, this is definitely not that. So I guess what am I trying to say? I'm not gonna go on a second date with it or I'm probably not gonna pick up any other books by Carol Goodman, which is a bummer, but this was still fun to dive into a book that I hadn't heard anything about. Um, definitely not something that I do often enough. So I would do this again. Maybe if I went for a different genre in the future, it would be more likely to be my taste. Um, I'm not sure. But now um, it is like almost 1030, which is gonna be a late night, but I do wanna watch a movie or I wanna at least start a movie. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna figure out what scary movie I can stream for free and that I've been interested in watching. There are a couple that I have in mind, um, but I'm gonna at least start that. I'm probably going to get some, hmm, maybe ice cream or popcorn because at this point it's been a long time since I ate supper because that was so early. Um, so I'm gonna have a little snack. I'm gonna watch a scary movie. I will check in and wrap up this video at the very end, whether it's tonight after I finish the movie or maybe tomorrow because I fell asleep during the movie. I don't know which one it'll be, but I will see you one more time before I close out this video. Did I just watch? I just finished Midsummer. That was the weirdest movie I've ever seen. I have no words if you've watched it. Should we discuss? I don't think so. I don't know if I ever need to. <laughs> oh my goodness. I like want to talk about it, but that was so strange. That was not what I was expecting. I mean, I'm glad I watched it. I'm gonna look up some stuff after this. What a date night. Um, it's 1 a.m. exactly. Can you see the time on my phone? No, you, oh, there you could for a sec. It's exactly 1 a.m., which is like four hours past my bedtime. So I'm going to call it a night. That movie has me a little bit messed up. I was gonna watch Us but then I realized I don't have the Hulu like version that you need in order to watch us. So then I decided to watch Midsummer. I'm really glad I did not watch that with my husband <laughs> or on an actual date night. I guess this is a fair warning. If you are going on a date with somebody, would not recommend this movie as the date night movie unless you are into very weird movies. Like I enjoyed 90% of it. The last 10% totally lost me. What's interesting bringing this back to books is I know for 100% a fact that if I read that in a book, I would have hated it. Hated every second of it for sure one star. But I realized now, or I'm starting to realize that I have very different tastes in books and movies. There are a lot of things that I um, like to watch in movies that I would not enjoy in book form, like weird horror type movies. I mean, I'm not, I don't know, weird stuff is still weird to me. I don't think I go too weird compared to a lot of people, um, but like, oh, losing focus here. I don't know how to fix this. This is a sign to go to bed. I was just gonna say like weird stuff or like romance, like rom-com. I 
do not like in books. Oh, it fixed itself. I do not like in books, but I do enjoy watching that in movies. So I don't know. But okay, I'm gonna go to bed. It's past my bedtime. Um, that was a weird movie. How do I end my videos again? I don't remember. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, let me know if you would ever be interested in doing like a blind date with a book yourself or if you have ever picked up um, those blind date book packages before and if you've ever ended up enjoying or finding a new favorite. Otherwise, I will be back with another video hopefully soon um, and I will see you in that next one. Mm -hmm.